Even men at the top of their game find themselves wanting more from life. Whether it's more meaning, unshakable confidence, a hotter sex life, a bigger impact, more money, deeper love, solid friendships, a powerful legacy. Find out how good you can have it on this episode of Man Alive. Head over to shaynajamescoaching.com slash manalive to get outtakes, raw footage, and bonus videos you can only get there. You can also grab your copy of The Unknown Power That Accelerates Your Career and Solidifies Your Confidence with Women. Welcome to this episode of Man Alive. And uh, I have Decker Kunov with me who's not breathing <laughs> because, because somehow it's making too much noise. Anyway, I am thrilled, Decker, to have you here today. And Decker has been a colleague and a friend for you know almost two decades now. And uh, we've had a wide range of experiences together. And I just feel delighted to have you here. So thank you. Glad to be here. And I love the name. I, I love the play on words with Man Alive. And, uh, and for a lot of us dudes, I think... I think the the most interesting experience, human experience to deal with or like not uh, struggle with is just, it's not pain, it's not failure, it's not a lot of the things that would seem problematic. The thing that drives me nuts is the feeling of dragging my ass out of bed. Mm, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and when I wake up just popping out of bed, excited for another day effortlessly, not because I'm committed, but because I'm just stoked like a kid, that that's what I think of when I think of man alive. Mm. You're helping yes. us feel that. Yes. Yeah, so I want that. I want that for men and women both, right? And I think uh, our culture around us, there's so many shoulds and so many expectations. And I just, I really love bringing together mm -hmm. experts to help men figure out like what has me feel alive? What has me feel like yeah. life is worth living? And you in particular have been an amazing example for me. And we just, we just did a little outtake on uh, our two particular relationships to anxiety that I'll put on the website. But it's interesting because you've been an example for me of someone who does, um, you know, when you're in that aliveness, you, you exemplify that you jump out of bed and you've got all this energy and, you know, you've created companies and you are the co-creator of, the Authentic Man program of Authentic SF, Authentic World. Um, you've worked with troubled youth. You've been in the military. You've <laughs> coached influential leaders and CEOs. I mean, you've had a life where I, I almost, the word bounding comes to mind. Like you, you, you bound with energy, not in the tied up way, but in the like, like a deer, like you leap <laughs> and you... You leap I feel forward. exhausted just hearing that list of things. Like <laughs> yeah, you've done a lot, right? <laughs> and you couldn't have done that if it wasn't what had you feel alive. I mean, there are certain things I know from our relationship that you've um, drained yourself or, you know, that we've both done in trying to run businesses and not knowing how and all of that where we've drained ourselves. But ultimately, I see you coming back to what has you feel most alive. I think it did me a favor that I had no real ambition. <laughs> like I had no goals of any particular thing I had to make sure I attained other than just working hard and enjoying the work and seeing where it took me. I uh, stayed out of my own way enough mm. for that to happen. So I, yeah. I feel kind of blessed. actually. <laughs> <laughs> so no ambition can actually be a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> one less well, thing to torture ourselves with yeah exactly the the topic i want to cover today is one a conversation that we've had many times that i think is so useful for men and we call it the myth of confidence mm -hmm. and one thing you know when i coach men or when i've worked with men through the authentic man program men often come to me with this idea that confidence is attractive you know, I want to be confident. I want to be solid. And that's what's going to, um, you know, land me a date or get me into bed with a woman or, um, 
you know, give me that next step in my career. Like I have to be confident and that this idea that confidence I think is more being solid, like a rock and never doubting yourself, you know, and, and we have discussed this, that confidence, we see confidence very differently than that. So I think having this conversation gives many men permission to be human and to feel what you feel. And so, um, yeah, kind of bait, kind of, to, to kind of like start uh, mimicking the behaviors of some basically posturing guy who like, Oh, I just need to be more cocky like that guy. And then I'll, it, it, there's, there's a whole other, it's good news. It's good news. Yeah. Around all of that. And that's why I brought, that's why I actually brought that up of like not having much ambition, slightly sarcastic is that I, uh, that's another version of, not getting hooked onto the myth of confidence. Um, so yeah, I'm with you. I think it's hugely relevant for us to live more alive is to know what is the sweet spot where we're relating to this idea of confidence in a way that's actually feels real and yeah. up and engage with the world <clears throat> without trying to act some way that seems false. In order yeah. To- so great. Okay. So that's a great start, right? You know, feeling confidence or experiencing our own confidence without it being a false something we put on a mask. So how, how do you describe yeah. your version of confidence? Well, I, so I called it the myth of confidence 13 years ago when I was doing men's work, um, slightly provocative to kind of poke at that thing. But I, I will say that there's something legit in like the literal definitions of confidence. I think it's there. Like, like when I was a kid, I was just had a knack for climbing trees and stuff. I was just a little monkey. And, I also think I just got lucky where I did some crazy shit here and there and got away with it just mm-hmm. enough times where my buddy fell out of the tree and broke his arm and he still, you know, he healed up and he was still climbing trees, but he was always just like a little careful after right. that. <laughs> and I wasn't like, I was just so fully engaged in swinging branch to branch that I, it builds on itself, right? Yeah. Like the, the, the little distracted awareness is trying to make sure you don't fall is the thing that's going to have you fall. Yes, and, and then you fall again, and then you give even more evidence that you should be more careful, and you're a little more distracted. So, so that idea of confidence and this presumption of ultimately I'm okay, mm-hmm. implicitly that I'm, I'm I'll be all right. I'm just going to give my full self to this, whether wherever it goes. That's the confidence that I I, I think I do live by and feel blessed by. Um, but I I do remember dating. Kendra, my ex-wife, our one of our co-founders, years and years ago, and her getting pissed at me at uh, like maybe our third date, mm-hmm. and like just gave me like a like, little shot to the arm or something. I was like, "What did I do now?" And she's like, "Nothing. You're just so confident. I just I, wanna, I just have to hit you." <laughs> and I was like, "It really struck me." So I was like, "Oh, that's so funny because I would the confidence is the last thing I would think." That you I would say I'm feeling, yeah. Uh-huh. I was like, every time I ask you out on a date, I, I'm assuming it's going to be a no, and I'm right. Even right now, I'm assuming this is going to be our last date. So I don't, I wouldn't call this confidence at all. And she's like, yeah, well, you keep asking me out anyway, though, and you keep enjoying the date anyway. And I was like, huh, yeah, well, of course. I'm gonna like, if I'm attracted to you, even if I'm assuming you're going to say no, I'm going to be honest about what I want. And I'm, uh-huh. and I'm gonna be elated when you surprise me and say yes, or I'll be sad when you say no. But I'm not gonna like not ask you out just because I think you're gonna say no. But I don't feel confident that you're gonna say yes. And she's like, no, 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 that is confidence, right? And that hit me. I was like, oh, anything where we think I'm confident, that blank. Like the myth of confidence is that I'm gonna make these things happen because I'm confident that this is gonna happen. That's not. That's not it. Right. The confidence to be real, to be honest about what I want, to be stoked about it, to go for it and be confident that I'm going to make art out of her rejecting me horribly <laughs> or, or it's going to be really sweet when I'm surprised that she says yes, that I'm confident in my commitment to bringing my best uh-huh. and to celebrating the falls as much as the, the breakthroughs. That's, that's the confidence that had me swinging through trees. Okay. And so part of what you just said too, right? I'm the the commitment to celebrate the falls as much as the breakthroughs or the you know the lows as much as the highs. 
that you're willing to take that risk versus um, holding back because of the fear that someone might say no. Like you, you know, you said, oh, I'm going to go for what I want. I'm not going to hold back just because I think you're going to say no. But I'm also not pressuring for a yes. I'm, I'm right. sincerely like delighted when I get the yes, but, but I'm unattached. I, I think in thinking, oh, I got to be confident, is that I end up with more and more agenda and yeah. a narrower band of what I'm going to be happy with. Right. It's so interesting. And then I think, oh, right. Okay. So how did you cultivate this unattachment? <laughs> I mean, that's one of the biggest, one of the biggest questions or, you know, goals that people have in life is how to actually be able to want something, but be unattached to the outcome. I keep hearing the wankas yeah. from Vipassana, right? Anitya, Anitya. Uh-huh. Um, but how did you cultivate right. your sense of an attachment? I, I did have some, I had some really profound moments or I had, I had an awakening here or there that helped for sure. Um, and I think it's more, like I said, I had a certain act for certain things and got lucky enough that the momentum got going. But when, when we crash enough that we're wincing or like anticipating rejection as if we're not going to be okay Mm. um then then it's it's a patient process like i have to take baby steps and actually celebrate every micro move towards being more playing more full out and celebrating those wins i i had I had drug dealers breaking in the house looking for my dad who was probably in jail or owed the money or whatever. Like, I, like things were fucked up when I was very young. Yeah. But, but my mom, she was 17 when she had me. Like, we were growing up together and the yeah. love was just so clear and unwavering. And my granny too. Like, I just had these relationships that were so pristine that, yeah, when, when your needs are met in such a profound way, at the core of it, everything else is just interesting material. Mm. Wow. Okay. I have to stop you there. <laughs> like, okay, right. When your needs are met in such a profound way that everything else is interesting, it's like, oh, when you actually don't need you know, someone else's affirmation or, or like if you're, if you're in this dating example or something, right? If you're asking a woman out and whether she says yes or no, you you know you're okay. Like you said, you'll feel something, you'll be sad or you'll be delighted, but ultimately... My okayness is unwavering. Yes. And if it's not, that's, that's where my attention's at, is the place where it's not. Like, oh, if this doesn't happen, if I don't get this job, it's, I'm acting as if I'm not okay, which mm-hmm. is usually in some way my failure to appreciate what I have. Mm. And somehow taking the bait of acting like there's someone else's life that I'd rather have than my own, which is a recipe for a mediocre life. That it's like, well, then it's easier and easier to say that someone else's is better. Um, and the reverse is like people have told me like, well, yeah, of course, if I had your life set up the way it was or it is, then like, yeah, I would want, I wouldn't want to trade with anyone either. And I'm like, no, 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 you're missing the whole, I mean, it's, you're putting the cart before the horse. The only reason I even have the life I have now is because I was already offended at the idea of FOMO. Like, I'm not going to act like there's somewhere to be other than here now. Mm-hmm. That's a, that's a dishonoring of my life. We were like bordering like white trash, like living in borrowed trailers and stuff. It was really easy for to lose dignity and act like yeah. we are like less than citizens or whatever. And that was like a betrayal to the love for my mom and how much I love my brother and my sister. And like we were, we loved our life. Period. It just wow. so happens that that's a good recipe for improving the shit out of it. So now, it's I don't know who I'd want to trade with, even at the ego level. But that's a result of making sure that we love our lives where, where it's at. You got to start somewhere. Yeah. And it's a really interesting dilemma sometimes for someone who doesn't love his life, mm-hmm. you know, right. The, the kind of recipe in a way of gratitude and appreciation, but also making the changes 
on the other hand, right, that have you actually love your life, but it sounds like what you're saying is you've got to start with loving what's there, which goes back to the, the AMP model hmm. you know, of appreciation versus trying to get away from something or trying to change it immediately. Sure. I'll love my life how it is once it goes the way I want it to go <laughs> or the way I want to appear to other people or whatever it is opposed to. Nope. Appreciation first, mm-hmm. including appreciating, huh? Right now, I'm not even appreciating where I'm at. I'm not loving my life, and I'm hearing this damn podcast about it, and I'm <laughs> not loving the fact that I'm not loving. I'm like, oh, man, I'm not loving my life. I suck. Love that. Like, be amused by your own loop. Like, you got to start somewhere. Start by finding something to celebrate, something to honor more deeply about wherever you're at now. Wow, this is my ride. Mm-hmm. I love that in part what just happened to me is my mind just went totally blank. But in this really um in this really sweet way, like things just got quieter. You know, and so much of my life struggle has been the inability, I would say, to appreciate those moments, especially of my anxiety or beating myself up. <laughs> <laughs> as totally. we talked about in our little outtake. Um, totally. But right, like when I actually can bring appreciation and when I've worked with men to be able to bring appreciation to those moments to let go of all that shame and that kind of grinding that we do to ourselves, you know, suddenly there's light. Suddenly there's joy. Suddenly there's, there's little love flashes. there baby steps and they start building. I remember this woman, um, you reminded me of her, or she reminded me of you um, in Panama one night, we were out on the beach and <laughs> okay. super anxious about little creepy crawly things. And, <laughs> and I was just so celebrating things. I'm like, oh, you're such an anxious little creature. Like you're acting like you're not at home on this planet. Like unless you're in a like, asphalt jungle or whatever, like you crack me up. And, and she's like, well, she, she lit up at the interest in her, why she was wigged out. And she said, she's like, well, if these creatures aren't dangerous, then why are they only out at night? <laughs> like, clearly they have something to hide. <laughs> and I was just so enjoying, I mean, the, it, it was funny to watch her anxiety shift just by it being so celebrated in, in her yeah. Well, and you, it's its funny. I wish that we were on video right now because I can see the twinkle in your eye that happens totally. when you appreciate someone and you're yes. so good at it. And there's this <laughs> way of, right, celebrating, you know, even what seems like it couldn't be celebrated. Yes. And the, and you, it's a muscle you build like anything else. That's mm-hmm. like, like you just, you, you jump jump off the couch before you even try to climb the tree again. Like you just baby steps and rebuild that sense of trust in yourself and in your environment. And uh, I, I remember the first time I felt really tested in this was I was making about 10 K a month from a corporate client. And that was just like, <laughs> for my upbringing, especially no college degree or anything. Like it was just, it was a lot of money and i loved the work and more and more i was noticing he was not actually using he wasn't applying the coaching for himself which is the uh-huh. real one. and i had to fire him as a client and i was clear that this is what i'm committed to i coach or to train or help facilitate these things for this for the world and if you're not doing it then i'm not why i'm wasting my time yeah but, but then i was like but then if i made that much money i could use that to do these other pro- like i was trying to wiggle out <laughs> losing that money and i finally just did it <clears throat> and it was really it, he had a huge breakthrough from mm-hmm. me basically dumping him like the most real conversation we've ever had where i actually felt like i made some contribution to him as his coach and but then like a year and a half later he's in a situation where he doesn't know who to trust he's got too many millions of dollars flying all over the place and everyone wants something and he remembers this dude who turned down 10 grand a month because for integrity reasons like well right. i can try that. ends up hiring me for even cooler projects later so it it does pay off right in some ways it just more and more builds on itself but you can't count on that you have to do it there is a leap of faith and if you can't make that leap of faith immediately then you start off with baby steps like it's like snowboarding where like i i know that i can just 
just barely carve here and there, make these subtle adjustments and I'll be fine now. But at the time I had to like carve hard left, carve right, right. I have to make sure I'm in control. I have to make sure I can stop just in case. Like there's be patient, celebrate the process, enjoy. Mm -hmm. Instead of like oh, afterwards, now, now when I just fly down the mountain, like I could have done this the whole time, but why shame the process? <laughs> I didn't That's know. A great question. Love all of it. That's, that's part of what gets you there faster. Right. And so in a way, going back to confidence, it seems like for you, confidence is loving all of it and loving the process because therefore there's nothing wrong and you can take a risk without feeling like you're devastated or it means something horrible about you if you, you know, don't succeed or. Yeah. The funny thing is it doesn't even register quite like a risk anymore. Mm. Not in the same way. What is it like? It's, it's more like interesting tension. It's like dynamic tension moment by moment more than risk. Even risk starts to, again, go back into the paradigm of that there's something to lose here as opposed to just more interesting experiences to make the best out of play by play, moment by moment. Mm. Yeah, my brain's doing that same thing again where it's like yeah, it's there's, there's a way that you talk sometimes where my logistical or like my logical brain doesn't quite get it. And I know it's going in on these deeper levels mm. and right. It's like you're, cause you're speaking to these paradigms, you know, like a, a paradigm shift or a, a shift of a lens through which we relate to life. I mean, this is a big, this could be for some listeners, right? This could be a huge shift. I just thought of something. So, yeah for sure i and if you're not so sure about that i mean i did have i took a pillow from the hotel when i was learning how to snowboard and stuffed it down my pants <laughs> <laughs> my ass was just killing me from falling so many times so like it's not that wasn't like i wasn't confident enough i was doubting myself like like be compassionate with the process so, like for you Pad what yourself. is yeah yeah is there anything that you're um that you feel uh, a lack of confidence or like, Oh, you know, like a little bit of a holding back clinching around something that's a natural expression for you. Right. Like nowadays. You're asking me. Yeah. Or even in the past couple of years. Yeah, sure. I mean, I think it's funny because we've been having this conversation of whether we were going to do this over video or audio and somehow being on video for me, I have this, lack of confidence I'll say or belief in myself or like what if I look silly or uh -huh. make some kind of face and yeah whatever I just I get embarrassed or uh, uh, anxious about it got it I like that one that reminds me of um it reminds me of the first time a woman said that she liked she loved the look on my face when I was orgasming mm. I just was I just cringed. I was like, I just assumed what I, first of all, I have no idea what the, the whole, the, I have no idea what my face looks like in that moment of all <laughs> moments, but I have no, I have no confidence that it's at all impressive. Right, right. <laughs> or particularly composed in any way. That's for sure. <laughs> but then I realized like, as I relaxed into just being with the, that she was clearly sincerely like, adoring it i was like oh that's probably why she loves it i have no idea what my face looks like i'm so lost in the moment with her right right that there's no self-consciousness that's probably it probably is a pretty odd looking face like objectively but the the experience of no self-consciousness whatsoever that's what you're that's what you're robbing us of in video with you in the, every moment that it becomes about yeah how it might be seen or how right what's the worst what's the worst thing that could happen What's the worst of that? This is, the, this is like putting a pillow in your pants. I know. Gonna tell where, like, if you were on video and you didn't look blank. Right. I didn't look good or attractive or powerful or professional or something. Oh, wow. It's got to be all of them at once. Oh, God. Right. Yeah. <laughs> got it. 
Okay, let's say if I was on video and I didn't look, um, maybe pretty is probably like the vulnerable one. Mm. Um, right. It's like, well, then people wouldn't want to be with me or wouldn't like me or wouldn't respect me, something like that. But probably like the right, again, the vulnerable is like, oh, people wouldn't want to be with me. Got it. And then I don't have, then I, why am I even bothering this podcast? And I was going to, I'm not pretty enough for them to tune in for the next one. Which is really horrifying that I just admitted. <laughs> and I can actually, I'm feeling both like, oh, I can celebrate how that's kind of adorable and sweet that it, there's this little part of me that wants to Good. be pretty. Good catch. Even as I'm doing this thing in the world that I want to be of service. Bingo. And how, but it's also like, wow, we can let those things get in the way of doing something that's so important and meaningful. The moment you notice that there's a lack of confidence, it's a reminder to take, it's just, it's a tell, like in poker, that's your tell where you get self-conscious that to remind you of what you're actually doing this for. And mm -hmm. you of all women I've ever met actually care about men. Yeah. You actually go out of your way, even if you don't even some guy at, at a rave that we weren't even ever going to hang out with again, not like a client or workshops. We weren't even coaches yet. And you go out of your way to contribute some moment to somebody where his life is better and where the men, women's life are better for him having that insight. And, and you're losing touch with that every moment to you lose confidence. Right. That's beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> it is. It's such a beautiful dance and reminder. That's how you're, it's going to show up. It's distracting you from what you're actually doing here. Right. I mean, what I love that's, that's so great to me that we just said about it's beautiful is like that's the example, right, of how you actually do see it and how you're inviting us to relate to those moments of like, wow, I would see it as anything other than beautiful and yet the baby step for me is can i find the beauty in that and you know can i also turn my attention back to what what actually feels important to me yeah but i really like that piece of okay you know for for everybody listening to like oh could i even just try on what would be beautiful about that or what i could celebrate about that or what is um, you know, sweet about that or something like that. Yes. It's just so human. And I do think that you're more likely to celebrate that and see the innocence and the beauty in that for someone else than you are for yourself. Yes. So much so. I mean, you know, we've, we've <laughs> led so many workshops and had people just crying and snotting or puking or whatever. And we've just, you know, I know you and I both have looked at <laughs> their faces and just been like, Oh my God, you're I'm, so beautiful. I'm right here with you, totally. <laughs> it's so amazing. I feel so much closer to you. And they're like, what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? So I, 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 I know we're over time, but just again, you can't really fake this. It's one of the beautiful things about this kind of riddle of how the world seems to work. You can't act more confident in this pure way so that you have all these awesome job promotions and the high like sex and all that it, it's it doesn't actually work that way you have to actually let go into what if this is as good as it gets mm -hmm. moment moment by moment and can i love that and how do i shift and breathe and remember or forget in ways that actually have me enjoy it as much as possible that does tend to lead to all the more super like the external successes and wins and all that. But, but you, you, I have never seen it faked. It is, it's a leave. Yeah. And I think as you say that, what comes to me also is with this definition or this way of looking at confidence, you don't have to, um, you don't have to have some kind of sense of your ultimate capacity to do a thing and do it well and get an A. It's like, it's, it's more just about the willingness to come face to face with mm -hmm. life in all its forms. <laughs>
Uh, that was a fun ride. <laughs> Thanks for getting me to admit my uh, <laughs> worst fear. It's not my worst fear, but my fear related to this, putting this out there in the world. Yep, I want this to be one of your early recordings that you put out so that yeah. all your fans can insist on the other ones being video from now on. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you. Thank you for being an amazing teacher and friend. And mm -hmm. I uh, hope we do a lot more of this. Me too. Yeah, I love what you're about. I, uh, I would do it just for the time with you mm -hmm. and, uh, and good stuff. I'm excited for you. Thank you. Anything you want to, anywhere you want to point people if they want to find you or do you not want to be found right now? <laughs> well, you mentioned all these companies and authentic this and that. And um, the Integral Center with Robert McNaughton is rocking in downtown Boulder. So integralcenter.org is where you can find a lot of our trainings and events and um, network with a lot of cool community all around the world. Um, so that's where, that's where the action's at. Awesome. And you can find me on Facebook. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. Talk to you later. Okay. Bye, everybody. I'm so glad you joined us for today's episode of Man Alive. I hope it gives you a sense of what's possible and how good your life can be. If you like what you heard, I'd be so grateful for you to subscribe to Man Alive and write a quick review that helps men like you find us. And again, head over to shanajamescoaching.com slash manalive to get outtakes, videos, and raw footage I only share there. These are some of the most interesting parts of these expert conversations. You can also grab your copy of The Unknown Power to accelerate your career and solidify your confidence with women because the two are related, and I know you don't have to settle for one or the other. Join us each week for a new episode of Man Alive. Man Alive.